Hi everybody, it's Robbie from Southern California. It doesn't really matter where I'm from. Today, it's basically on just hummingbirds. I had so many questions and so many comments that I decided to do a little video on my thoughts, my research, my experience, and what I'm learning about hummingbirds. And I thought I might just kind of talk. It's almost like a podcast type thing, but I put in a lot of footage of what I do around here in my garden with all the hummingbirds that show up and we grow flowers and different things. And so this is what that's all about. It's just all on hummingbirds, why I feed them, why I think it's so important. And my husband's home. Look at that, he went to the store. So with that, I hope you enjoy this video. And if you don't want to know about hummingbirds, then don't watch it. But this is just hummingbirds and they fascinate me. And I think I will explain a lot in there that might give some people some thoughts because not everybody knows that much. I didn't even know that much. And I've been so surprised on what I've learned over the past few years on hummingbirds that I didn't know. So enjoy the video and thanks for watching. And if I don't come back at the end, have a wonderful day and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye. No, no, don't bye-bye. Go watch the video. <laughs> Hummingbirds. Yes, we have a lot of hummingbirds. And now that I've done a little bit of research, I know I've told you that we've had hundreds of hummingbirds come, thinking that we've had maybe two or three hundred hummingbirds pass through here. Well, upon doing some research, I found that I was off. Now, as far as how many hummingbirds we have here, I looked up and did some research on Dr. Calder, which is C-A-L-D-E-R, and he studied hummingbirds and he counted hummingbirds. He kept track of a lot of different species and how they eat. And his calculations was that if you have an eight ounce feeder, that would feed about 47 hummingbirds per day. And thus, if you've got a 16 ounce feeder or two eight ounce feeders, you're feeding approximately, if they're emptying them out, 94 hummingbirds a day. He had actually figured it out. When I did the calculation on some of the days, I could not believe on some days, we could be well over a thousand, possibly double that. We seem to average, I had figured out, since we go through a gallon, we actually go through a little bit more, but let's just say a gallon. We have at least, according to Dr. Calder, 752 hummingbirds a day. Now, granted, the Orioles do come in and feed off of that too. And that's why I'm calculating, even though we're putting out more than a gallon, I will stick with the gallon number for now and say 752. The Orioles in our yard here are nesting, they do have babies. So they are going through some of the nectar that we put out, the sugar water for the hummingbirds. But it's fascinating, just fascinating, because I kept thinking, oh, we've got 100, 200. And when I actually stopped to do the research on that, we have far more than I had even thought which is probably the reason I had to go over to and order 350 pounds of sugar now. What fun. It's worth it. Generally, the calculations are now telling me that we have approximately, feeding here on the property, about 750 hummingbirds. Now, that doesn't mean that there's 750 hummingbirds, or thereabout, give or take, living on our property. They're coming from all over. They're coming from far because they can travel miles and miles a day for food. What they usually do here is they come in in the morning. As soon as the sun comes up, starts to warm a little bit, they come out and they feed heavily. All the feeders are full of hummingbirds. Now, keep in mind, a hummingbird generally feeds anywhere from, let's say, five to eight times from a feeder an hour. The rest of the time, they're foraging. They're out there looking for other food. They're not surviving just solely on sugar water. They are looking for other food. But the first thing in the morning, they all load up. So the feeders are generally 
so packed with birds. They are literally waiting in line after one feeds, another one comes in, and they're sitting and feeding constantly. That's when we probably have the most in the morning. They empty the feeders quickly, and I've got so many feeders, I don't even know how many feeders there are offhand. But the point I'm saying is they're not living in my garden. They're living everywhere. They're living all around the cities around here, and they're coming here. Then during the day, they come in, and they feed periodically all day. That is not to say the feeders are empty, but there's always birds at the feeders, pretty much all the feeders. They come in, they eat, and they leave. It's not the same bird. Now, we knew this from years ago. I can't remember how many years back, but I guess it was about maybe five or six years now. Um, we had a pied come in. That's a bird that has got other coloring to it. There were two. One had a few white feathers here and there, and then the other one had a massive amount of white feathers. We did not do any videos of it. We weren't doing that, and the hummingbirds were just starting to come in. We did not have the massive numbers like we had now. But we did notice, Gary and I, that the one pied would come in, and we wouldn't see that bird, oh, maybe for another 15 minutes or so, sometimes 20 minutes. So it was only feeding maybe four times an hour, which made us realize at that point that all these birds that were hanging around, though they look alike, were not the same birds. And that's when we learned that we had a lot more than, let's say, 10 hummingbirds feeding. So as time went on, more and more birds started to come, and my one or two feeders that were not emptied all the time were washed and refilled and then starting to empty more and more. These hummingbirds were not here. I've been living here since the 80s and I was lucky to see maybe one hummingbird, two hummingbirds here and there. We didn't see that many hummingbirds. They were zipping around. And I used to put feeders out and just like a lot of you, I would take it down, it would be bad. I'd have to wash it and clean it and put it up and hope to see another hummingbird. So then they started to build. It, they've only built this amount of numbers here that we've got probably in the past four years, I would say. And not this, num this amount. It's getting bigger and bigger every year. But for the past four years is when we started noticing we've had a lot more hummingbirds than we've ever had before. And like you've seen in the other videos, we had a hummingbird for two years build a nest on my kitchen window on the hangar where the hummingbird feeders are, build her nest. I watched her. I didn't even know what she was doing in the, in the beginning. She'd sit there and she was like putting stuff there. And, but I didn't know what she was doing. And then all of a sudden, within days, she built a nest. She used that nest, by the way, for two years. She had six clutches, three per year. Each clutch contained two little white eggs which resulted in two babies, six babies in each year, and she returned the following year to do the same thing. Now, what she did last year is she moved it. She moved the nest just around the corner, a matter of feet from where her nest was, and she had her babies there. Then she moved it again to the front of the house, which I had a video of her moving it.
And then she moved it again because she wasn't happy. The first place she put it, she got a little bit rained on. And then the second place, she wasn't happy with that either. Now she found the place where she's happy and she raised, I guess, her third cl clutch on the side of the house. Oh, I would say 30, 40 feet from where the other one was. And the reason we know it's her, it's her behavior. She'll follow me around. And the other thing is she uses a lot of shade cloth and she used her nest every time she moved it. We're pretty sure it was the same bird. And if it wasn't, it might have been one of her siblings. Getting back to feeding the hummingbirds. A lot of people say they fight. Think of their size. Think of how much they have to eat. They have to eat half their body weight at least a day or they will die. If they don't get enough food to sustain that for their life, the next day, they're not there. They're gone. There are very few birds really like that. There's a lot of birds that can go for a day, if not longer, without food. And I can tell you a story on that someday if you want to hear. But real quick, change of subject. A friend of mine, which I became a friend of his afterwards, found an owl. He had found an owl hit by a car. He had it in his movie trailer. He was doing Fantasy Island for a, almost a week, I guess about five days. Then he found me because he knew I knew about birds. He brought me the bird laying on its side, almost dead. And he said he found it on the side of the road. I didn't know what to do, but long story short, if you want to hear the story someday, I can tell you the whole story. It's a beautiful story. The bird lived and he had it for many, many, many years. So there's a bird that went for almost a week without any food at all, hit by a car, smashed, and yet still survived. A hummingbird has to get at least half its body weight in its body before it goes to sleep. If it doesn't, they will not make it. That's because their heartbeat is about a thousand times a minute. That's how fast their hearts beat. A thousand plus a minute. Now, when they go to sleep at night, it reduces down to 50. They're, they're just constantly moving and the speed of their body needs that food that we're helping them with. I know a lot of people have come and said, oh, don't feed them. You should not be feeding hummingbirds. You should let them forage in the wild. I agree. I absolutely agree. They should be foraging in the wild. But here's the problem. The wild in the city life and, and all around the city is being built up. The wildlife, as far as plants, are being pulled out. You've got weed abatement, so all the weeds are being removed and that means the flowers as well. You've got people changing their landscape because let's say the weather has not been the same. It's been hotter than normal or colder than normal. And, and they're trying to be, have drought resistant plants. So they're changing the landscape. I mean, it's a lot of things. Empty fields. When I was a kid growing up in Los Angeles, there were still plenty of empty fields around. Plenty of things growing. A lot of those fields are gone. It, everything is being built up. You've got concrete everywhere that used to have masses of amount of wildflowers. You don't have that anymore. So their numbers are going to dwindle. I have videos up on YouTube exactly how easy it is to make the recipe for them. And I'll put the link up there so you can see how fast and easy you can make it. So I don't have to get into the detail of that right now. The good thing about hummingbirds is we have the ability to help them. There's a lot of birds we cannot help. There's nothing we can do. A lot of birds have perished or their numbers have gone down because there wasn't enough food or whatever has happened. But with hummingbirds, we actually have the ability to help them, which is rare because there's a lot of animals there's not much we can do. By just putting out a sugar nectar for them, which is so simple to make for anybody, a quarter of a cup of sugar to one cup of water. I've already got the recipe, how easy it is to put it together so it melts and it's all one unit. is so simple to put out and do for them that you can build your numbers up. 
Anybody that's got hummingbirds around, I believe, can build their numbers up. All it takes is one or two little females to come and start having babies in your area, and they'll produce and produce, and those babies the following year will have babies. The numbers like here have built up, and they'll come to you if you put the sugar water out. They are not just living on the sugar water. That is keeping them going. That is the nectar that they would normally find and feed on, which they can't find as much as they could have many, many years ago. So by us doing that, we're supplementing them. That's all we're doing. We're giving them a little bit of food, and then they're going out and they're foraging the rest. They're eating pollen. They're eating nectar. They're eating spiders. They eat insects. They forage all day. They need the protein. They can find that as long as they have enough nutrients in their body to keep them going. So that's what I'm doing. I'm not trying to get them to live on sugar water. I couldn't because they need more than that. What I need is help. I need help from all of you. If you've got hummingbirds in your area, put out some feeders. Don't worry about the little bully that's there. And some people say, oh, I've got one. And he's beating everybody up. Of course he is. Look at their size and look what they have to go through to live day to day, just day to day what they have to go through. That little hummingbird that's beating everybody up and shushing everybody away, he is out to survive. He is going to fight for his life. And if it's a male, he is fighting so he can stay out there and spread his seed and so he can have babies. And if it's a female, She's fighting for her life so she can produce and have babies. That's what they're doing. They're fighting for their life. They're not trying to be mean. They're not trying to do anything like that, but just survive. That's their way of survival. People have said, why don't they fight on my property here on, in our gardens and our, where our feeders are? They don't have to. They know that there's enough food. There are feeders all over here. They rarely fight. They shush each other away. Hummingbirds, like people, like dogs, like other animals, they find certain feeders that they like. It's their preference. You'll see them go to that feeder. They don't want the feeder next to them. They want that one. And they'll shush somebody off. But they're not fighting. They're, there is enough food here and they know it. And if it does run out and sometimes... It does, and I've got to go make more food, and I turn that tea kettle on. They know the tea kettle. It's like swarming across the canyon. I can see them coming, and the trees are full, especially in the evening. That's their heaviest time of feeding. They know the tea kettle means I'm out to make them more food. So that's what we have to think about. I'm not killing hummingbirds by giving them sugar and water. Do some research, Google it, you will see you can actually help them. Don't put in juice, don't put in honey. Just like a child, a baby under a year cannot have honey, they cannot have honey. There's a bacteria in there, it can kill them. No honey. Really, the only thing they need is sugar and water. That's what their bodies need. It's the sucrose. That is exactly what will sustain them. They'll be able to build their numbers. Believe you me, if I was killing hummingbirds, we wouldn't be feeding at times close to 3,000 hummingbirds when I've got to make over three gallons in one day. It doesn't happen that often, but when they're coming through and migrating through, I have had to feed that much. Generally, day to day, we have now figured out we're probably feeding about 750 hummingbirds. I had no idea. This is research I finally did on my own, and I almost fell off my chair while I was at the computer. When I read the calculations on the counting of hummingbirds, that is what we have. They're not here. They're coming here to feed. And at night, my trees are full. They're waiting to, be to eat. They're waiting to make sure there's enough food, which there is. Believe you me, that's one thing I make sure. And that's what they do. So is hummingbirds my life? I would have told you three years ago, no. I guess it is now, but you know what? I get such joy out of them. The only thing I wish is I wish more of my neighbors would be feeding them. 
And yet it will be hard for them to move to the neighbor's house because they are creatures of habit. They know where the food is, but they still forage and they still look. So all I have to say is if you see a couple hummingbirds, that's a good thing. That means they're around. And if you start feeding, more and more will come. I don't know if you want that many. I mean, we had to go out, Gary and I, and just buy 350 pounds of sugar I mean, to make sure that we don't run out. And I want to get it at a fairly good price. And, you know, I mean, you can't blame me. It's costing me a fortune. But I got a really good buy. And it was cane sugar, pure white cane sugar. It was great. And everybody's happy here. So I just kind of wanted to talk a little bit about hummingbirds. As far as dye, going back to that, that comes up so often. The research actually shows that the small amount of a couple drops of red dye doesn't hurt them. But, and that's a big but, don't use it. It's a waste. You don't need it. And what if by some chance, like people, you have a few that may be allergic to it? It's not needed. The dye is basically for people. And I do know that some people have said they wanted to use the dye because they, they hang up their hummingbird feeders and they want to be able to see from where they are as if they've got food in it. And I understand that, but you don't need it. Work it out a little differently. As far as buying hummingbird food, you can buy the nectar. Oh, and I will not because I would not. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd be broke. But anyways, if you want to buy it, you can they do have pre-made hummingbird food. It is more expensive. I'm going to say about 80% of them do have a heavy red dye in them. You really don't need it. It's actually a waste because it's so easy to make. But I understand that there are people that want to feed them that may not have a home, that may not have a microwave, that may not have a cooktop where they can boil the water. They have no way of making it and they just want to buy it. They're renting a room or they're living in a camper or something. I understand that. And for you that you have no ability to make it, then so be it. Then buy it because anything will help them. It, it is made to sustain them so it will not hurt them. I'm just saying it's easier and cheaper for you to make it. So I hope I kind of touched on some of the notes that have come through, the notations and messages as to what's going on. I know people have made comments, what do you mean you're feeding 100 hummingbirds? Yeah, what do I mean? I, I thought it was 100 and I have now found out where it's 700 plus. So the point is, we're all learning every day. I'm learning Life is a learning experience and hopefully we can make it better and hopefully we can understand that the reason we all want to help hummingbirds and there's so many of you out there that want to is to keep them around because I mean something could happen. They could easily become extinct. They do die a lot of times while they're migrating. If they cannot get enough food to sustain them for the day as they're traveling, a lot of them perish during that time weather. If the weather goes bad, they can perish. If the weather is too cold, they can perish. Too hot, they can perish. What it is, is if they can't find the flowers and the nectar, then they can perish. So a lot of them do die that way. Yes, cats get them. I've had people say cats get them. That's true. But the main thing right now we're focusing on is food. So as we start to live in a concrete world, let's help the little guys out. They're beautiful. They deserve it. Let's give them a little bit of nutrients of food that they can do and eat and move around and be able to search around and get the food that they need. And think about it. Flowers are wonderful, yes, but that little flower, truthfully, how much nectar is in that flower? How much pollen is in that flower? Here's the problem. If you've got a lot of birds feeding on a single flower, you can have a dozen and you know, flowers, but I'm just saying that single flower, if, if a bird comes by and pulls the nectar out, stop and think about it. That's not a feeder. So how much pollen and how much nectar is actually in there? So if one hummingbird comes by and then another hummingbird comes by and a butterfly comes by, they're not necessarily feeding on that flower if there's been two dozen 
birds go there. They're searching for food. And during that time of them searching for food, they're burning up their fuel and energy in their body. So just because you've got some flowers out there doesn't mean that's enough food for them. They're searching each flower. They pick and push and look to see what they can find inside the flower. But if that flower in one day has been visited by dozens of birds, believe you me, there is not enough food to feed the dozens of birds that came to that flower or your garden. So you've got the bees too. Keep in mind, you've got bees, you've got other pollinators, you've got flies, you've got all kinds of insects that are visiting the flowers. They're all pulling from it. That's why just because there's flowers in an area doesn't mean there's going to be enough food to sustain all, let's say, the hummingbirds in that area. That's why I think we really should try to help them if you've got them around. Not everybody's got that many around, but they are all over the United States and they are in some places more, their numbers are higher. I've heard they're all, there's a lot of them in Texas and in Arizona. They're all over them, definitely, as you know, California. So all we're doing is helping them. Will they get lazy and only feed from our feeders? No, but they will know and they will remember and feel the encouragement to go out and look and the security of knowing that if they do not find enough, they know where to come back to get more. And believe you me, they buzz around my head and let me know if their feeder is empty. That doesn't mean all the feeders are empty. But again, certain ones pick certain feeders. So I had one feeder the other day that was empty. One feeder out of what, 10? And he came buzzed around my head because his feeder was empty. He did go and I'm sure feed from one of the others. And I did go back and fill that feeder. But the point is, again, they pick their feeders just like they pick their flowers in their areas. And the ones that are feeding here, I guarantee you are coming from miles away. They're taking off and disappearing all day. And then they come back at night if they have not found enough food. If they haven't found enough of other hummingbird feeders around to help them and sustain them. They know they can come here to our new hummingbird sanctuary, I guess, and feed. So let's give them a break. Let's help them out a little bit. Get yourself some sugar. It's cheap. Almost every grocery store carries it. I've even seen one and two pound boxes at dollar stores. You know, get some sugar water, get it out there. Don't make that much, of course, because it's going to go bad. Just make a small amount. Calculate it and make less if you want. But if you make one cup total, one cup, and keep it in the fridge, it can last in the fridge all week. Put a little bit out. Don't put the whole cup out. Wait until they find your feeder. Make sure when you're putting the feeder out for the first time, you put it out in an area where if a hummingbird is flying by and they've got terrific eyesight, they can see from across the canyon. When I walk outside my house and hang it, they come buzzing over. So they can see it as they're flying by and they do know your standard hummingbird feeder that's red. And you know what's funny? is the ones from the dollar store and the 99 cent store and even the ones that are in other stores, the small red ones, the cheap ones, they recognize that. Do they think it's a flower or feeder? I really don't know what they think. But the point is they know what it is and they will come right away and they will feed on that, especially if they're hungry. So let's help them out. Let's get some more feeders out there. Maybe I don't have to buy so much sugar if more people around me would be feeding the hummingbirds and we can all spread the joy of having the hummingbirds around. So that was my thoughts of the day, trying to go over some of the questions that I have had in comments. And I hope it gave you an idea. And if you're not sure about something I said, Google it. Check it out. I think you'll find that sometimes people think things like, let's say, Boil water to get the fluoride out. I've read that and different things. You know what? It doesn't work. From the research I have found, if you boil the water down, you're going to have more fluoride because all you're doing is evaporating the water, but the fluoride doesn't disappear. Don't sweat the little things. Don't worry about the little bit of fluoride in the water or whatever they're putting in. You know, the point is, they're drinking out of sprinklers. When you're watering your lawn, they're dive bombing. There's drinking from water on leaves that are falling from your watering in your garden. They're already drinking your house water. 
I wouldn't sweat that. That's no big deal. Don't worry about every little thing. The main thing they need is food to sustain their life. That's what they need. So put out your sugar water. Don't worry if you want to use tap water. If you want to use bottled water, that's fine. Don't add in juice. I've heard people put in all kinds of stuff. I heard of an area that lost. They were finding dead hummingbirds and people were thinking there was Kool-Aid and different things in there. The hummingbirds may not know what's in there and they may feed out of desperation. I mean, a lot of them are smart enough to come and if there's something bad in there, I, somebody told me they put juice out and then the hummingbirds left. Thank goodness those were smart enough to know that wasn't what they were supposed to eat. But if a young one comes around, he doesn't know and he's starving, that's what he's going to eat and it may be something in there that's not good. So let's just do it the way it works. They'll come and get their sugar water and then they'll go and they'll forage in the gardens. They'll look around whatever flowers they can find and we can help them out. And everybody's going to be happy. So that's my thought of the day. And I hope you enjoyed all the footage that I've dropped in here with the hummingbirds because now I just walk around with my camera all the time. I'm amazed at such little creatures they are and how wonderful they are and how smart they are. They are one of the most intelligent birds, I would say, on earth. As tiny as they are, they have to be because it's only going to be the intelligent ones that survive. With the, with the way they have to eat, and if they don't get enough food, by the end of the day, they perish. Believe you me, the intelligent ones survive, and that's why they are the smartest birds, I'm going to say, on earth. Because they have to be in order to survive. So I hope I gave you something to think about. Please, I, if I offended anybody, and I hope I didn't, it's just my thoughts. You know, it's just my opinion. I do the best I can. And I just want to keep those feeders full. So have a wonderful, wonderful day. Let's get those bird baths out for them too because they love to take a bath. And they need water too. So little water fountains out there, they love to get their water. They're not getting their water just out of the nectar. They do like to drink too. So have a wonderful day. I hope you enjoyed this. And don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye, everybody. And thanks so much for all the wonderful comments you always do. Bye-bye.